So you can one, take two minutes and show everybody the ask line, because I think it's cool and I want to see, I want to try using it with the Midday Connect. And then after a couple minutes of telling us how to do that and getting us all signed up, you can jump into your presentation. Sure. Thank you, Taylor. Oh, I appreciate Oh, go ahead. Please introduce yourself too. I always forget that. So yeah. I mean, I have to tell people who I am. That's not Yes, good. please. Um, <laughs> no, thanks so much for, um, for letting me be here. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those I didn't get to be in the breakout room which with, which was most everybody, um, my name is Stephanie Sims. I am the founder of Financeability. I am also the co-founder of the Ask with a K line. Taylor mentioned to me that we might need to rethink the naming because it could be uh, it could create some challenges, but we're working on that. Um, I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about what what to do when you think you need more intros to investors. But before we jump into that, Taylor wanted me to show you guys the ask line that we have created for the Midday Connect. So I'm just going to share my screen and show that to you guys. So the ask line is a platform designed to change the way that networking works by focusing on generosity. The goal here is that um, do I can't, I can't, I hate this. If I was in a room, I could ask, ask people to raise their hands. But do I have go-givers in the crowd? Is Are there people here who know what a go-giver is? By Bob Berg. Well, if you don't, you should go read it. Um, it's a very good series of books. But basically, it's talking about the best way to build relationships and the best way to actually be successful is to focus on helping other people succeed, right? It's this give first mentality. It's being generous around any connection that you make. And so that, that philosophy is what's at the heart of the ask line. And what we do is we allow groups like the Midday Connect to create their own line. So you can connect with all the folks that are part of Midday Connect and you can talk to them about what it is that you need meaning your ask, and you can talk up to them about what it is that you can help them with, which is your give. Now, if you wanna go, hang on one second, I gotta get to the chat. I will drop the link for the Midday Connect into the chat. You can all jump in if you'd like, and I'm just gonna walk you through how you create your give and your ask. Um, if you've not connected to the platform before, we make it easy for you to connect using your LinkedIn profile. You'll see that once you click on post a card, it will ask you to log in if you are not already logged in. If you're like me and you're already logged in, it simply walks you through the process of creating a card. And so I have several different taglines. And the cool thing about the ask line is that you can actually decide in a specific line who you want to be and what your give and what your ask are. So it's not like a profile where you have to be one person all the time for everybody. In this situation, for example, my ask might be, tell me how we can improve the ask line. So if any of you guys or girls would be willing to provide feedback, I would love that. And you can do it directly on the platform. And what I can give is I can help you understand your best path to funding your business. And that's what we're going to talk about just a little bit later. Now, my develop, not my development team, the development team, which is uh, my co-founder, John Zecklin, and his, uh, his team at PHX Devs, did this really cool thing for anyone who watched Office Space. Is that the right name of the movie? Where they had flair. I was, I never saw the movie. I'm too old, apparently, for this whole thing. But you can actually put flair on your card to make it a little more fun. You can decide if you how you'd like people to contact you. We just need one method of contact. You don't have to fill all of this out. And then as soon as you post put it on the line, you can start to scroll through. So now, oops. So now I can see I'm I've got a card, Taylor's got a card. And if I want to say to Taylor, hey Taylor, I can help you. All I have to do is click on his card. And now I can go and look over here at all the cards that I've collected, including Taylor's, which is hidden by the Zoom for me. Then if I'd like to reach out directly to Taylor. Oh, sorry, that's patience. Sorry, there we go. That's why this is Taylor right here. If I'd like to reach out to Taylor, I can say, 
hey Taylor I can help you with more topics for the midday connect and Taylor if you're actually connected you'll hear a little bing and you'll be able to chat with me directly in the platform so does anyone have that's how the ask line works does anyone have questions around that feel free to drop them in the chat i'll stop sharing for a minute uh, and make sure i answer any questions on that before we dive into um what it what to think about when you think you need intros to investors okay so i'm not seeing any chat questions i did get it i'm just checking it out here so okay. that's awesome that's fantastic oh. so i was just Hi. thinking can I, can I just ask, um, do you know Tony Boda um, in terms of his virtual world? Because there's a lot of overlap that I'm seeing. And um, I was just on a site with, um, with his release and a walkthrough. Um, so I'm happy to connect the two of you. I was just writing him. Um, but a really cool virtual world that includes a lot of online connection and the pedestrian and things like that made me think immediately of a common place for the two of you to talk more. I do not know Tony, but I would always welcome a connection with anyone who's trying to do the same thing. Great, Thank so you, um, I'll, put, I'll put my stuff in the chat and uh, let's connect more. Okay, super. Thank you so much, Holly. Sure. That's awesome. Um, so I was just thinking for the Midday Connect, we could like, sh Stephanie gave us our own line so we can go in there and just kind of have an internal back and forth with anybody who is, um, who's in the group. So jump in there and, and see what it's like. Yeah, the one thing I did not mention as, as I was trying to keep it short, but since we're gonna talk about it a little more, let's do that. Your, your line, the Midday Connect, allows you to connect specifically with all the people in this group, but your cards are also posted to what we call the main line, which is groups across the country here in Phoenix, we've got some other people in different areas. Obviously, now we have you guys. And if you're interested in helping in a more broad based way or just scrolling through and seeing what people are doing and what people need and what people can offer in other areas, you can do that by browsing the main line. There's a little green button right at the top that allows you to browse the main line. Super cool. I love it. Thanks. Awesome. Stephanie. Yeah, of course. And again, on the platform, if you want to pull that card, if you want to say, you know, respond to my card saying, yes, I can help you, send me whatever feedback you have about the ask line in the chat on the ask line. That would be my ask. <laughs> that way you get a chance to experience the features and I also get um, some really helpful feedback that we can take and improve the product with. Okay, awesome. So Taylor asked me to come and chat with you guys just briefly about this concept of what you need when you think you need introductions to investors. Um, and I think this came out of a conversation that we had, Taylor, you and I both, where uh, this happens a lot, right? People, I'll meet people, I'll tell them I help them raise funding, and I'll say, well, how can I help you? And their immediate reaction is, oh, I need introductions to investors. And while in some cases that may actually be what you need, I would encourage you to think about this in a different way. And I'm gonna share kind of two perspectives on it. The first thing I want you to think about is that fundraising is marketing, okay? So fundraising is actually a sales process. And just like you cannot be successful trying to sell your product or service to anyone and everyone, you can't really be successful raising capital by simply saying, I need introductions to investors. You need introductions to specific investors, hopefully, because you've created your own sort of target list, or at the very least, you need introductions to a specific type of investor. And that's when you would share, for example, your ideal investor profile with someone like me who might be able to, to make those introductions or with anybody else in your network who could help you do that. So, so why is this important? Well, as you know from trying to sell your product or service, it's much harder to convince somebody who doesn't deeply understand the problem that you solve that they need you. 
And in this case, if you're thinking about investors, the problem that they need to solve is to make an investment that fits their criteria, right? So angel investors have very different criteria than Sand Hill Road venture capitalists. And so if you fit the criteria of an angel investor, talking to a Sand Hill Road venture capitalist is probably not a great use of your time right away. Now, it can be if it's an exploratory conversation, but that's not somebody who's going to invest in you right away. And so that's where this concept of really thinking through who your ideal investor is becomes so important. Now, when I say this to a lot of people, they're like, well, my, my ideal investor is somebody who's going to write me a check. <laughs> and I get that. I, I do understand that getting someone who will say yes is part of the goal. But I want you to be, to be a little more rigorous with yourself. And I want you to remind yourself that it's hard for somebody who's not a good fit to say yes. And so as you're thinking about getting introduced to investors, I want to encourage you to shift out of the mode of nameless, faceless many. Um, do I have any St. Elmo's Fire fans in here? Does anyone recognize that reference other than me? <laughs> okay, go look it up. It'll, it'll make you laugh, hopefully. Um, but a lot of people tell you that you need, you know, a list of hundreds of investors and you just have to turn through them and eventually someone's going to say yes. While you do need a big healthy list of investors, if you have a lot of investors that are not similar or good fits for you, you could meet all of them and still end up with zero people who said yes. And so I would look at your investor pipeline in the same way and with the same critical eye that you would look at your sales pipeline. You're going to invest time and energy trying to connect with and convince these people. You need to be sure they're going to be good clients before you do that right? This is where having an ideal investor profile is super important. And I would suggest that you have specific names of either investment groups or individual investors that fill at least half of that list. I'm not saying you need to have 100 names, but you need to have at least 40 to 50 because you never know who might know those specific people versus who might be able to introduce you to someone at XYZ BC, right? So as we think about this as a marketing process and as we think about building this pipeline, right, of potential investors, a lot of people don't know what criteria to use and they don't know how to build that list. And so what I wanna share with you guys is, sorry, trying to share my screen, is a way to help you get there. Um, but the first thing I want to tell you, and this is something I put together that's just called the funding formula to help you understand how this, this fundraising process works. Investors are right here in this W cubed category. And what does W cubed mean? It means who you talk to, what you say to them, and when you talk to them. But you'll notice that that's actually step three in the process. And what happens is a lot of entrepreneurs start there and they don't understand how to decide who goes on their investor list because they haven't done steps one and two. What is step one? Step one is build a credible milestone based ask because one of the first criteria that you're going to have to come up with for your investor list is can the person I'm talking to write the kind of check that I need them to write to close my round. So what does that mean? That means if you're looking for a million dollars, do you want to try to track down, make sure my math is right, 100 people to write you $10,000 checks, or are you trying to say that to raise that million dollars, you're looking for investors who can write at least a 50 or a $100,000 check? Those are not the same person. Someone who might write a $10,000 check, generally speaking, is not the same person who might write a fifty dollars to $100,000 check. And particularly as you start to raise even bigger amounts of money, you want to be sure that you're talking to people whose check size, which is what people refer to that as, matches 
with the kind of money you're asking for. Likewise, if you go talk to a Sand Hill Road VC and their minimum check size is $3 million and you're looking for a million, it's clear you're not a fit there. And again, doesn't mean you wanna never talk to them for the rest of your, the life of your company, but they're not a target for this particular round. So, and I could go on because I love talking about the numbers, but before you decide who goes on your investor list, you absolutely have to have a clear milestone-based ask. Then the second thing that you have to have is you have to understand what kind of money is a good fit for you. And this is where I see a lot of entrepreneurs run into trouble as well, because they think that venture capital is excited about all kinds of investments. And in reality, venture capital, and to a certain extent, angel investors are excited by a very small percentage of investment opportunities. But that doesn't mean there's no money for all the other kinds. It just means you have to look in a different place. Sometimes that could mean crowdfunding. Sometimes that could mean different types of debt. Uh, recently, you've had folks like ClearBank who have launched some revenue-based financing opportunities that can be used for both marketing spend and for inventory. So even if you're a product company, there are still some options out there for you, but those aren't angel investors and venture capitalists. And so again, if you go to an angel investor and you say to them, I'd like you to finance my inventory because you're a product company, or I'd like you to finance my working capital because you work with large enterprise clients, they may not be super excited about that as an investment opportunity because what they want their money to go towards is perhaps a business with really high margins that they can invest a lot in sales and marketing and see exponential growth. So before you decide who to put on your list, you need the milestone, clear milestone based ask, and you need to understand what kind of funding is appropriate for what you're going to invest the money in. And so maybe I'll stop right there and take a breath and see if that makes sense to everyone or if we've got any questions. Taylor, I don't know, what are your thoughts? I have questions and I always take over on the question side in the chat. So I threw a couple of questions in the chat, but I would welcome everybody to do the same, throw, throw some questions in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask away. But if you wanna yeah. start with the chat questions, that's my um, selfish suggestion. <laughs> okay. Well, so the top, the top three. So the first question that you asked is, what are the top three investor profile elements, right? So that's kind of, if you have rows and columns, right? And investors' names are in the rows, what are in the columns? So I think one of the things has to be check size. I think one of the other things has to be, um, I guess what I would call sort of their own investment thesis. And by that, I mean, uh, angel investors are a little harder to discern because they can invest in anything they like, but any investment vehicle that is that has been raised for the purpose of investing has an investment thesis that they use to get those investors on board. And so it's not, you know, let's just say that it's a clean tech fund. So it's, it's a group of venture capitalists that are investing in clean tech. If you go to them and you have a really cool opportunity, but it's not in clean tech, they may love you and they may want to invest, but they can't because when they raised the capital for their fund, they told their investors they were only investing in clean tech. And so you, again, if you want to look at that as practice, that's great. But the reality is you've just invested a ton of time and energy in a prospect that can never close because they're prohibited from it. Like legally, they can't invest in you. And so understanding their investment thesis is super important. And then the other thing I would always tell people to look at, and you can get this data off of their, quite often off of their um, own website, is look at the portfolio companies that they already have invested in and see if there's anyone who looks similar to you. Now, that's a broad kind of judgment-based assessment, but if you look at all the companies and they're all um, B to C, I don't know, products, let's say, and you're a B to B SaaS business, even if their investment thesis says that they might invest in you, concretely, that's not what they're doing, right? So looking at their portfolio, you can get a sense for where they are actually excited about deals. And you can give yourself a little assessment as to how like their current investments you really are. 
Now, that one's a little more subjective because you have some, some funds that invest all over the place, right? But I think those are kind of criteria that you should always have on your plate to try to help you identify your most likely prospects and who you should talk to first, second, third. Does that help? That's awesome. Okay. And I see there's another question. Um, how do you get a list of investors so you can start planning on who to focus on? So Spencer, I'm not sure. Would you, would you maybe just describe to me a little more what your question is? Well, you're, I mean, you're, you're talking, you're talking mostly about not to shotgun it, not to say, okay, here's a hundred different investors. We're going to list all these people that may need to focus on. Mm -hmm building that relationship with those with those that are, would be good clients so where do you where do you go for where do you go to find those investors in the first place to know who to focus on oh okay so there's a few different tools um one of the one of the tips and tricks that i like to share is that you can find a company that you admire and that may be kind of in your same space or in a related space maybe it's even one of your competitors and you can try to do some research on them and see who invested in them. And so that's always a good way to get a sense of who's investing in your space. Now, you can find that on their website. You can find that through press releases. Sometimes you can just Google. Now, Google is not always as refined in their search results as we would like. So, you know, be careful when you're Googling. But you can look generally, you know, clean tech investors, clean tech early stage investment, things like that. You can also use Crunchbase. I don't know if you guys know Crunchbase, right? Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, Crunchbase is a great place and they do have a free program where you can actually look at different investment companies and see what investments they've made or look at different startups and see who's invested in them. And so that's also another place to go. I think that uh, another place that's really interesting, although it's changing, is AngelList if you're looking for more early stage investors. And I personally, having spoken to quite a few investors as well on my podcast, think that LinkedIn, once you get to the point where you know the name of somebody or the, the title and the company, LinkedIn can be a pretty valuable tool as well for trying to connect directly with the individual. Now, depending on what kind of money you're looking for, um, if you're going for an angel group, for example, quite often they have a specific process they want you to go through. So it's great to connect with somebody on LinkedIn, but they're still going to say, yeah, but you need to go to our website and fill out this form and do all these things. But if you can make connections with individuals so that when your application comes in, they recognize you, that can always help. So did that, did that help Spencer a little bit? Okay, cool. Um, okay. And I, Taylor, you're keeping an eye on the time because I'm just, talking yeah, about you're good we've got at least 10 more minutes maybe 15 uh oh, okay there, there's uh joel was wa waving his hand oh well go ahead whatever question you got okay so for a friend who might not be as open about um talking about the amount if you have no to low record of real estate want to build about 150 to 200,000 square foot uh, manufacturing facility and you want to be able to tap into a group of investors that would be able to see the value of not only the structure but the factoring of what will be manufactured there what what type of um, an investment group would you go after for that it's a little bit different than our typical SaaS type of thing and everything but do you have any ideas of who you'd go after for that type of thing so is he, is it going to be owner occupied or is it going to be contract manufacturing where he builds a contract manufacturing business there and other people manufacture their stuff? Both. Um, about, um, uh, about 30% of it would be um, owner um, occupied and um, doing very advanced manufacturing, but they want to align with other advanced manufacturing, which is why they want to be able to build out this space. They, they own the land that this will be built on. So it doesn't have to be a complete investment. It would just be basically the um, investment of the structure itself, which could be you know, um, 20 to $30 million. It's, it's gonna be a big structure. Yeah, well, I mean, 200,000 square feet. So so the place my mind immediately went when you started talking about the facility was 504, right? So the, that's an SBA loan okay. for owner-occupied real estate. And generally, you're going to get pretty good terms on that uh, in terms of interest rate and things like that. Now, 
Obviously, the difference is it's not investor money in the sense that they give you the money and they don't want anything back. An SBA loan is a traditional loan where they give you X million today and they want you to start paying it back right away. Mm-hmm. But in terms of in terms of loans, it's one of the most generous loans that you could probably get because they're designed to help small businesses, right? Like that's the that's yeah. the concept of the 504. And, and it's not like with this particular business that they're going to have to wait that long to be producing some of the revenue. So it's not like they're going to be um, de- dead in the water. So SBA, it is maybe even complement that with the USDA or something. Well, so I would certainly look at SBA 504. I think the thing he's going to have to look at is that there's an, there's a, some criteria around how much of the property is owner occupied. So he might not be able to get funding for the whole thing. He might okay. only be able to get funding for the owner occupied part. Um, I would, I, there's a couple of things out there that might be interesting and I haven't worked with these platforms. So this is just a starting point, right? Certainly not a recommendation. There are platforms out there that are basically crowdfunding real estate investments. Yep. Like C, so C, um, reg CFs reads and stuff like that. Right. But it's specific and I'll have to go and look because I have just had a brain fart and can't remember the name. There was a couple that I looked at the other day and essentially what they're doing is just like they're just like crowdfunding for equity investment. These platforms are essentially matching projects with accredited investors, okay. right? So it's kind of like you'd put your project up there and say, "Hey, we need an extra twelve million to complete the project," and whoever wants to sign up can. And the platform itself manages. And again, you'll want to check, you know, how they manage the investment. You don't necessarily want a hundred people listed on your, you know, corporate records and things like that. But I would think that would be another approach. And then I think the other, the other thing that might be interesting is could he make a deal with any of his early clients? This is something I love to tell people to try, right? It doesn't always work. But could he make a deal with some of his early clients where essentially they preload, right? They pay up front for access, exclusivity, development of a specific custom manufacturing line. And so he raises some of the capital he needs through an actual sales mechanism. Got it. Because if he can show that he's sold stuff, everything else gets a lot easier, right? The 504 gets easier. Anything he does, does talking to investors get easier. And frankly, even if he goes, like even if he was going to go on a crowdfunding site and he says, we've already got an anchor tenant for 50,000 square feet, that's a very different project than I'm building this entire thing on spec and I don't have anyone yet. Yeah. Right. Because it, it, it once again can be based almost on a factory and engine. Okay. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course. My and, pleasure. And to follow up with Joel. Um, I mean, it's not, thank you, Joel, for keeping it discreet, but really it's, we're trying to build a 150,000 square foot facility in rural Utah. And a lot of it could be owner, some of it could be owner occupied, some of it could be occupied by other tenants, but trying to find that 10 to $12 million investor who's, who wants to invest in rural Utah on a if come on a spec building is very hard. Is there any opportunity zone fund? Can I I just, I I know I've talked with both of you in the past about this, but I, I, you know, I wasn't aware that you guys were a little farther along. It suggested we could talk after the fact is, is that most real estate deals, especially that size are leverage deals, which means debts involved, which means income needs to be able to show to, to cover it, which means that investors will not invest speculatively on it. So you have to invest on what you have the ability to pay for on the debt because that's what they're going to expect on the bridge loan. But uh, I know a lot of people that can do that. I've brought it up with you both before. If you guys want to talk more about it, we can circle up because I've done quite a lot of these kinds of transactions. And Emmanuel mentioned opportunity zones. I think that could be interesting too, because I think there was, I don't know what it's like in Utah, but here in Arizona, there was actually some grant funding. No, not on the order of the type of project that you're talking about building, right? But it would be a fraction of it. There was some grant funding for investments in opportunity zones. So it does happen to be in an opportunity zone as well, but it's kind of like what, what Garrett said, it's been hard to find someone that would invest if it's, if it's not own rock, if it's not occupied at the time to cover the debt. Right, well, and I think that's, I think the question I would say then is, I would pose is, can you get any of your potential tenants to come on board and partner with you and and basically you just yes okay it's it's like a it's like what someone would have to do in a typical retail to get you know an anchor grocery store you have to make them a really sweet deal but 
they're there and they've paid you something. Mm. I'd start to think about that. Like, who do you need and how could they pay you early? There's like, like, yeah, and kind of building on that, like there's a big project that uh, I've, I've been kind of working on with another group. They're building a big um, hotel uh, resort uh, down in South America. Yeah, it's like a $200 million project. And you don't just go and like, you know, fund that with no revenue because nobody's going to come in. And so when you go and set up a project like that, they actually, they actually stage it and pre-sell all the condos. And then they turn around and use the condos for the, the equity down payment against the loans on the leverage side of the deal to build it out. So I guess there's, there's like a million strategies on how to do it, to be honest. But realistically, if you guys are planning on this big like thing, it, it probably won't be a single facility. It'll probably be something that you need to build in phases. And it'll probably be something that you need to market ahead of time and sell some of the space in so that you can cover the debt because you're not going to cover it prospectively off of one, one tenant. But I, I, I know quite a lot of people in this space. Uh, and if you guys want to talk more about it and start talking about how to set that up, then just give me a shout. We just want you to stroke a check. <laughs> Famous simple. last words, right? Joel, have you been listening at all what Stephanie has said? You didn't even profile Garrett. You didn't go through his website. I haven't seen him on Crunchbase. I already know. We <laughs> already had this conversation. That's the, about, that's the hard part about real estate deals is because all the investors are private investors and most of the deals yeah. are private and they don't crowd list them. Yeah. Stephanie, I, I was saying the big, the big hotel project that I just mentioned, literally it's being funded entirely by like friends of friends who are like some, some like high net, ultra high net worth individuals that just want to run the project. Like there, there wasn't anything public about it. So unless you're networking in the right places, then you don't get access to those kinds of deals usually. Stephanie, you, uh, so typically we'll try and wrap up at 1145 unless there are more questions and people can stay after and ask you questions, but I wanted to make sure you threw up a slide with uh, an equation on it. Is that something that we can find on your website? What would you say to be able to tap into more of your expertise? Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I just dropped, and I think this is the right link with, oh, I did it wrong. It's got an S. Um, it's sorry, it's uh, stephaniesims.com backslash right investors. Backslash right investors. And you can get a copy of, you can get a copy of the formula, but it's a little more involved. It has all of the elements of each part underneath. So you understand like, what does it take to build a credible ask? What does it take to find the right fit? You know, what does it take to build this investor list and all that stuff? And so um, I would suggest and, and I'm, I'm always happy to, you know, talk about your specific situation if you want, you know, 10, 15 minutes of my time, just like we did kind of with Spencer's, right? Like, hey, here's what I'm thinking. I'm happy to share that with you. If you want to um, reach out to me on LinkedIn, and then you can DM me and we can set up a time to do that. I, I want for you guys to find the right money for your business. And so if there's other things I can provide you that would help you do that. I don't write checks, but other than that, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me either on social, on the ask line or wherever is most convenient for you. I love it. Use the ask line. That would be fun. Yes. The ask line is cool because then we can also decide, um, you know, if we want to share other things, right? Like we can connect there. So I like it. Awesome. Well, timing wise, we can shut down, but if you have questions and if Stephanie, you're willing to stay, we can just, mm -hmm. uh, you can stay on and ask questions for another few minutes if anybody wants to. Yep, I got until uh, five till, so I got another say 10 minutes. Thanks for keeping this going, Taylor. Can I do a, a quick um, ask tell before you take off? Um, we're part of the group that's doing the Memorial Day through Labor Day reopening of downtown Salt Lake City. There's going to be 17 different um, um, block fronts that are going to be open out to the middle. There won't be any driving in it. Um, uh, Taylor, I think I want to put together some sort of a startup um, Saturdays, which would um, likely be in the um, area by the um, 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 by the um, um, 
um, exchange place type of area and um, have a, a get together of the startup um, entrepreneurial community um, each Saturday um, leading up to beer fest and then do a big um, um, mashup and a beer fest, which will be over at the, um, um, the um, um, gateway. So just kind of keep that in mind. We got about six weeks to put it together, but um, we'd, we'd have the assets and the support of um, um, obviously Copperfield and, and um, Salt Lake City Corporation and the Salt Lake City um, um, Business Development um, um, Department too. And it'd be a lot of fun to be able to get uh, Salt Lake City up and going again. All right, sorry for stealing your time, Stephanie, very rude of me. No, that's totally fine. I mean, it's a community. Thanks, right? Joe. that's awesome. Will you, as you're developing that more, just make sure we're all aware of it. Like, let us know if there are websites we should go to or what we should be doing, Joel. I'll be in developed right now and in, um, in conjunction with Salt Lake City Corporation. Sweet. Awesome. So I don't see other questions. I'm happy to take them if somebody wants to raise their hand. I can only see like six people on my screen too. So if people are raising their hands and I don't see them, just unmute and jump in. So I, I do real estate um, as well, but I do it on a lot smaller scale. I do only owner occupied stuff and I do it a lot, I guess, up to a fourplex. I don't do any commercial stuff. Um, I'll do, I'll look at apartment buildings, but I, I don't do it a ton. Um, and I'm really working on raising money right now because I feel like I have a rev limiter. <laughs> We've got like this, this set amount of money and we hit it really fast and then we get paid back on deals and then we hit it and we get paid back. And so I've been looking for more and more people to, to invest. And, and there are obviously a lot smaller deals that we don't do anything over 450,000 normally. Um, and so what, what sources would you recommend are best to find individuals who want to invest in that type of thing? I've been reaching out to friends, family, other investors, like through bigger pockets, just connecting um, people, people have money there. Um, but but it's like like we said earlier, kind of more private, and so it's hard to get into those cut types of groups and and find people who are are wanting to do that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I think it's a I think it's an interesting challenge, um, and and we're a pretty big real estate town as well. I'm in Arizona, yeah. right? So that's a huge <laughs> interesting for us. Um, I think you've got two options, which uh, which Joel kind of Joel and Garrett both brought up. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I don't, are you currently leveraging your deals? Yeah, I, are you doing all cash? Well, I do a lot it? of private money loans is actually what I do. And so I, I don't necessarily leverage them now. Uh, okay. Because you might be able to get a better deal. In other words, if you, another way to make that work is to do more leverage, right? So the cash you have goes to more deals or to get a better deal on your leverage so that you make more profit so that then you have more profit to invest in the next deal, right? That would be another way to do it. Um, and there are some folks, um, I, I happen to know a, one in particular here in town, I, I don't know if they work in Utah, I think they do, um, that does some really cool stuff. So I can shoot you that. I would, I would just look at them maybe and see if you can get like higher leverage, right? So if you could get say 70% financing or 80% financing on a deal and you only needed 20% of the cash, then you can do more deals, right? You can do five deals instead of one with the cash you've got. That's, that's one thought. And then I think the second thing I would think about if you're really looking for additional investors is partnering with real estate agents, because I know sometimes real estate agents, again, you know, it's, it's kind of hit and miss, but there are real estate agents who are helping investors look for fix and flips. Yeah. And what you could say is you could say, hey, look, if you know people who want to do this, but who maybe have been burned in the past or who don't have the time and energy to take on another one right now, I could be an opportunity for them to do more diversification in their portfolio and work it that way. Okay. Like that could be another option for actually finding more investors. Cool. Cause that's, uh, that makes sense. And that's a really good idea. Um, I, I try to put really a focus on the passive end of it so that they don't have to necessarily do anything. They just get a return on their money. And right. so I think that would be really, really good if, if I can find some investors that they are kind of bored or ready to kind of step back a little bit, but they've got the funds liquid and they still want to keep making a return. So I'll, I'll look there too. Right. And that, you know, the criteria there might be, you know, have you, have you helped anyone who did a fix and flip and then didn't do any more? 
Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, because first- then a real estate agent, a real estate agent's like, I want to do that because I want to make the commission. You want to do it because you get the property. Everybody wins. Yep. I like it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I'll look into that avenue a little bit more. Um, okay, perfect. And then I'll send you, I'll just put it in the chat. Um, the name of this other company, again, not an endorsement, but it's someone you might want to look at because I know they do do some pretty decent leverage okay. on smaller deals. Cool. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. And I'm scrolling the chat. I don't see other questions. Did I miss one of your questions, Taylor? Yeah, it was okay though. I was just trying to figure out like if you had some sort of tool to match the type of funds, like you were talking about use of funds, like was it to fund inventory? Was it to fund something else? So use of funds versus um, investor profiles or types of funding. Like when is it best to go to grant versus angels, et cetera? So I do have a quiz that I haven't used in a while. Thank you for reminding me of that. So what I can do is I can put that together. It's not in a publicly consumable form right now, but I'll put it together and I can certainly share it with you. Well, so yeah, that would be awesome. I'm going okay. to, po- I typically will post my notes of the conversation, what you just did, your presentation on LinkedIn. Okay. So okay. you can share it there as well. So everybody can see it if you want. Oh, okay, super. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Or if you send it to me, I can, I can put it in my next email out to the Midday Connect group. Okay, what I will. You- yeah, exactly. Well, I don't think I'll have it done today. So I think it'll probably have to go in the email, um, but I will get it put together. And thank you. That's good to know that that would be helpful. Um, awesome. And I'll make sure I get it over to you. Cool. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you guys. You asked great questions. And it's always cool to see folks that are building something and looking for more money to build it, right? Like that's what that's what makes me happy too, is to see that you guys are out there looking for creative ways to fund uh, fund your enterprise. Cool, cool. Well, we'll have to keep in touch. Appreciate you. I'm going to hop off. You, you bet. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn.